Hi everyone and welcome back to Cloud Conversations. My name is Peter Rising, one of your hosts. Today I'm going to be flying solo on this episode where we will talk all about cyber security, a very important topic in the current world of technology. Why is it important? What is cyber security? Well, in the broadest possible sense, cyber security can cover an absolute multitude of things, but we are going to uh, drill down and talk about cybersecurity in relation to Microsoft 365 and Azure. And that in itself is a broad enough spectrum. So without further ado, let's dive in. Let's take a look at Microsoft 365 and Azure and what cybersecurity is all about. Okay, so now that we've set the scene, let's uh, dive in a little bit deeper. So what exactly is cyber security? Well, it's a set of processes, best practices and technologies that are intended to protect your network infrastructures, your cloud services, and your critical systems from digital attacks. As more people work and connect from a multitude of locations, malicious actors around the world have responded by developing sophisticated methods for gaining access to your resources and stealing your data, sabotaging your business, or even extorting money. The number of attacks is ever increasing and adversaries are developing new methods of evading detection. Uh, an effective cybersecurity program is therefore essential for all organizations. And this will include people, processes, and technology solutions that combined will reduce the risk of disruption to your business, uh, any financial loss, and critically, any reputational damage from an attack. Okay. So what are the types of cybersecurity threats that you can encounter? Well, a threat, let's define a cybersecurity threat first and foremost. What is an actual attack or a threat of an attack? It's essentially a deliberate attempt to gain access to an organization or sometimes an individual, individual or organization, gain access to uh, infrastructure, users, devices, and ultimately get to your data. And that is the lifeblood of any organization. They want your data. Malicious actors constantly are evolving their attack methods to make these attacks ever more sophisticated so they can find themselves in a position to exploit a multitude of vulnerabilities and make themselves more resistant to detection. So these on this slide here are some of the common methods um, of cyber attacks, cyber security threats that you can prepare for. Malware, I'm sure most people will have heard of malware by now. I hope you have certainly if you're watching this video. And this is pretty much a catch-all term for any kind of malicious software. And this can include things like worms, spyware, viruses, and of course the big nasty ransomware. And uh, malware is designed to cause harm to devices or, or networks. Uh, and what it will do, it will, it will try and alter or delete files. It will try to extract sensitive data such as passwords or account numbers. It will try sending malicious emails or, or traffic in some way, shape or form. And malware, uh, it's possible it can be installed by by an attacker who has gained access to your environment, but, but often individuals can unwittingly deploy malware on their devices or on a company network after clicking on a, on a bad link or, or downloading something like an infected attachment. So that is malware. Then we move on to phishing. Um, now phishing is a type of social engineering. We also will get to social engineering um, overall, a bit later in this slide, but phishing is a type of social engineering that uh, leverages emails, uh, text messages, things like voicemails, and these will appear to be from a reputable source. And the purpose of this is to convince those people to part with 
um, sensitive information or, or get them to click on something, an, an unfamiliar link. So some phishing campaigns will be sent to large numbers of people in the, in the hope and purely in the hope that at least one person will click it. Whereas other campaigns, more appropriately referred to specifically as spear phishing, will be more targeted and will focus on uh, a specific individual, a single person perhaps. As an example, um, it, a malicious actor may uh, pose as a, as a job seeker in order to trick a recruitment organization into downloading an infected curriculum vitae or resume, as you might say. So that's phishing. Then we have ransomware. This, this really is the big nasty, and this is going on all over the world uh, at the moment, and, it, and it's really horrible. It's a form, it's basically a form of extortion, and it uses malware to encrypt your files and make them inaccessible to you. It locks you out of your data, essentially. Uh, you can imagine the reputational damage uh, and loss of business that this is going to cause. So att attackers will often extract data during a ransomware attack, and they may threaten to publish it if you don't pay them. They, they won't pay in exchange for a decryption key, which you can then, um, in theory, use to decrypt your data and get access to it again. You, you've got to pay a ransom. And this will typically be in a form of cryptocurrency. Um, you really get the mercy of the of the malicious actors here if you if you decide to pay that ransom because you have no guarantee at all that the decryption key will work. So um, bear in mind that payment does not guarantee that your files will be recovered. Then we have insider threats. Now these are arguably the hardest ones to defend against. Now, with insider threats, um, people who are within your organization and already have access to your systems, like employees, uh, maybe it's uh, customers, suppliers, contractors, they can cause a security breach or financial uh, loss in some way, shape or form. Um, unintentionally, unwittingly, um, the unwitting insider, they, will, they may accidentally post sensitive information um, publicly into something like a personal cloud account. Um, but, but some insiders also act maliciously. So there are two types of insider risk, really. There's the, there's the unwitting insider and the malicious insider. And uh, these can be very, very, very difficult to, to combat. Getting back to social engineering next, we talked about it a little bit in the form of, of phishing. Um, but attackers here, there's lots of different types of social engineering. Attackers will attempt to take advantage of your trust and try to dupe you into handing over information or, or dupe you into downloading some sort of uh, threat, some sort of malware. Um, in these attacks, you'll find that malicious actors will often masquerade as a, as, a, as a reputable brand, something that you're familiar with. You may find that you, you think you're accessing a familiar website, but you, if you look at the URL, there'll maybe be one character out. And, and these cloned websites can be very, very, very convincing. Um, and these are psychological techniques to, to, um, to create, a, that will often create a sense of urgency the, the, the email that you will receive in a social engineering attack will, will say, urgent, you must act immediately. If you don't click on this link and, and, and do this, then you could lose access to this or you, there could be financial implications. So um, very, very nasty stuff and so, so easy to be, to be sucked in to those sort of threats. And then uh, finally on this uh, slide, we have advanced persistent threats. And in this situation, attackers uh, have gained access to systems, but they remain undetected over an extended period of time. And they will always um, have patience. They will uh, research their targets and attempt to steal data without triggering any countermeasures. And they will look to see if they can get any sort of lateral movement any elevation of privilege get higher permissions within the environment. These malicious actors can be very, very patient. 
in their attempts to uh, achieve dominance and persistence in your environment. So, um, so this is so important. I can't. I've already said this so many times already in this presentation. But cybersecurity and defending against it uh, is so so important because the world depends on people communicating uh, across time zones and accessing information from anywhere and on any device. And, and this makes uh, technology even more vulnerable than it's ever been. Uh, so cybersecurity is going to enable productivity by giving people the confidence to work uh, online with the right solutions and processes. Uh, nothing's foolproof, absolutely nothing, but you can take steps to protect yourself. So what are these steps that you can take? What can you do? You need to look at some best practices. And this starts with the principles of zero trust. Adopt a zero trust security strategy in the first instance. And this boils down into three specific principles. Always assume that you've been breached. Always verify explicitly. So use technologies like multi-factor authentication, Azure AD conditional access. Always use least privilege as well. So use um, privileged identity management, PIM, to uh, give just-in-time access to privileged roles. So users have only the access they need when they need it. So zero trust, uh, hybrid work is the key to this. Organizations are adopting hybrid work models to provide their employees flexibility to work in the office or remotely. Um, so w with this, a new security model was definitely needed to protect all of the elements that make up that hybrid workplace, people, devices, apps, and data, no matter where they're located. Um, and you cannot assume that you can trust an access request, even if it comes from within your network. So assume you've been breached, always explicitly verify all requests and employ that least privilege access. Okay, next, training. Educate and conduct simulations. Conduct regular cyber security training within your organization. This is not just the responsibility of security professionals. Cyber security is everybody's concern in the organization. Um, and again, when employees are using work devices, personal devices, uh, working from the office, from home, uh, many cyber attacks will start with um, one of the techniques we saw in the last slide, a phishing email directed at an employee. So even large and um, prepared and resourced organizations are at risk of uh, succumbing to social engineering attacks. So confronting um, these attacks and responding to them, being ahead of them in fact, really requires that everyone uh, is aware of the risks and works together to make their workplace safer. Educate your employees on how they can safeguard their personal devices and uh, help them to recognize attacks and do regular training. There are lots of techniques that you can that you can use to do this. You can uh, you can use simulations which are included with within uh, Microsoft 365 E5 to do this, attack simulations to, um, and these are not meant to trick your users. A lot, a lot of people think that that's the case, but the, these are here to educate your users and, uh, and, and make them aware of the risks that they are facing. And then they can attend training to improve their awareness. Um, there are other um, training uh, options out there, of course. Um, there, there are, a multitude of vendors that offer um, alternatives to that E5 um, attack simulation offering. But um, I, I, for one, think that um, what's, what's baked into to 365 is, is pretty damn good. So process is the next thing. Be on top of your processes uh, and know what they are. Institute these and always patch 
your your servers and 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 uh, devices. Make sure that routers and and everything is is bang up to date uh, and uh, and be aware of industry standards. So um, you need to develop processes that will help you to detect and prevent and uh, and respond to attacks. So uh, patching of software and hardware will will help you to reduce those risks and it's going to give you some clear guidelines which um, which will enable you to know what steps you need to take if you're attacked um, and you don't have to create your own process from scratch either there is a lot of guidance out there from uh, from organizations who provide uh, standards and frameworks and there are things like um, uh, NIST the National Institute of Standards and Technology there are there are things like uh, the International Organization for Standardization, the SOC. There are the CIS security benchmarks and um, all, all sorts of things that you can put into practice to help you to have these processes that will help you to stay ahead of the attackers. And then finally, yeah, it's all about money. You do need to invest. You can't afford to stand still. You can't say, well, this is working for me. Uh, why should I change it? Um, outdated technology is risky technology. You need to modernize, you need to automate, and you need to be thinking about leveraging artificial intelligence as well. It's inevitable. Um, and uh, technology solutions need to adapt and improve constantly to help address cyber security issues. Um, and many of these modern cyber solutions will leverage things like automation and artificial intelligence to, to help you to detect and prevent attacks automatically without a human uh, responding to them. So the, the, that is key. Because you can get your people um, doing more useful things than having to respond to these things, and that's, that's adding value. That, that's a good thing. Um, so um, this is key. You must invest in comprehensive cyber security solutions that will work together <clears throat> with you and your people and your processes to safeguard all of the things that matter to you in your environment, your identities, your endpoints, your applications, and your um, <clears throat> hybrid clouds. Okay. So, this is a slide from Microsoft, which talks about the cybersecurity solutions um, that they have that are available to help defend your identities and data and clouds and apps um, to work together across uh, environments. So the four key elements here are to safeguard your identities, to detect and stop threats, to protect your data and get cloud pro protection. So safeguarding your identities, um, so important to deploy things like identity and access management. And a good identity and access management solution will help to ensure that people only have access to the data that they need for as long as they need it. So this is talking about things like multi-factor authentication to help prevent compromised account from gaining access to your network and apps. So this is this is security 101, basically. And if you're doing nothing else, I always say, um, enable MFA at the very least. Enable MFA, even better, enable MFA using conditional access. <clears throat> so detect and stop threats. Um, this uh, speaks to technologies like SIEM and uh, uh, XDR, uh, which is uh, security information and event management with tools like Microsoft Sentinel and extended detention and response which speaks to um, technologies like uh, Microsoft Defender. So um, a SIEM solution, uh, Sentinel in this instance, will uh, give you a bird's eye view. And uh, as it says here, stitch together analytics from all across your security solutions to give you that view, that holistic or bird's eye view of your environment. Whereas with the Defender, uh, the XDR, um, that's gonna protect your apps, identities, endpoints, and clouds. There's lots of versions of Defender, uh, as I'm sure you'll be aware. Defender for Endpoint, Defender for Cloud, Defender for tons of them. And they all have a, a very important purposes. So then we get to protecting your data. This is all about information protection. 
Um, and this is speaking to technology such as sensitivity labels to um, encrypt and mark data, ensure that it's only consumed by those who have access to it, and also things like data loss prevention. And then finally on the slide, we have get cloud protection, control access to cloud apps and resources and defend against evolving cybersecurity threats with cloud security. Um, and as more resources and services are hosted in the cloud, it is so important to make it easy for employees to, to get to where they need to be without compromising security. So a good cloud security solution is going to help you to monitor and stop threats across multi-cloud environments. So here we're talking about things like cloud app security, uh, or Defender for Cloud Apps, I will st still call it cloud app security. Um, so let's take a look at these principles um, in a little bit more detail, one by one. So when we're talking about safeguarding your identities, we are talking about Microsoft identity and access solutions. And Microsoft have very, very nicely compacted uh, a lot of their technologies in recent times under umbrella terms. And for identity and access solutions, they are now uh, badging everything in the Microsoft Entra product family. And this is broken down into three uh, pieces of technology. We have Azure Active Directory lives in uh, in the Entra world now. Now, Azure Active Directory is nothing new. It's been around for a very, very, very long time. If you have Microsoft 365, you have Azure Active Directory. A lot of people still don't realize that necessarily. Um, and this enables you to safeguard your organization with identity and access management principles uh, and connect people to their apps, devices, and data. So Azure Active Directory, this is where you're going to have all your users set up and um, uh, MFA and um, all sorts of stuff lives in Azure AD. And uh, we, we could go down a whole rabbit warren talking just about Azure AD. And in a future video, I'm sure we will uh, dive into some of these technology principles individually and, uh, and more deeply. Now, two of the new technology solutions that are included in Entra are um, Microsoft Entra Permissions Management. Uh, and with this, you're able to discover and remediate and monitor permission risks across your multi-cloud infrastructure. So this is not just within Azure AD, it's, it's capable of uh, looking in um, uh, the, the Amazon Web Services world and, and GCP as well, the Google Cloud, and um, and look at things like entitlement management as well. So this is ensuring that um, permission risks across your uh, clouds are are recognised and addressed. So um, this is absolutely great stuff, and and again something I do want to uh, specifically address at some point in a in a deeper dive video, but this is a very high level view of, of, of the cybersecurity technology, so we'll, we'll not go off on tangent. I'm always so tempted to do that. And then finally, Microsoft Entra Verified ID, another new piece of technology that, that has been introduced under the banner of Entra, uh, which uh, allows you to create and issue and verify privacy respecting decentralized identity credentials with an identity verification solution that helps you to enable uh, more security interactions with anyone or anything. So that is the Microsoft Identity and Access Solutions. So important. That is the starting point. Everything begins or should begin with identity when you are thinking about protecting yourself from a cybersecurity point of view. Next, detect and prevent threats. And this is achieved with Microsoft Threat Protection Solutions. And there are, this this diagram really should be a triangle really, rather than a circle, because uh, the, the three points here uh, are, are the three um, pr principles that make up um, this threat protection area of Microsoft. So we have SEAM, Security Information and Event Monitoring. Or management, monitoring. <laughs> uh, I can never remember if it's monitoring or management. Um, so Microsoft Sentinel, this is your bird's eye view across your organization. This is bringing everything together, all of the signals from uh, from your apps and your endpoints and your identities and uh, email, everything. Even IoT, Internet of Things, is in there now. There's a Microsoft Defender for IoT. 
Um, so Seam integrates with uh, Microsoft 365, Defender products, Defender for Identity, uh, and Defender for Identity helps you to protect your on-premises servers, which is very, very important, using the power of the cloud. So you can install sensors on your servers, which will leverage cloud protection uh, and, and intelligence. Protect your endpoint devices, your, your applications, def Defender for cloud apps as well, Internet of Things, and email and docs, um, Defender for Office 365 which relates to uh, mail flow and, and mail hygiene, and with things like safe links and safe attachments. So then, so we've got Seam, we've got Microsoft 365 Def Defender to secure your end users, and then we've got Microsoft Defender for Cloud. This is to secure your multi-cloud infrastructure. And um, what, what that means is it's able to um, protect Things like um, uh, AWS and GCP again, but but more than that, it's uh, it, it's able to um, look at things like containers and Azure App Services, industrial IoT, network technology, SQL and storage, server VMs. So this is all about threat protection solutions and the three principles here: Seam, Microsoft 365 Defender, and Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Okay, and next one. I talk a lot about this one actually. Um, information protection and governance solutions. Protect your data, this is all about essentially. And this is under the uh, the umbrella term of Microsoft Purview now. I've talked a lot about this in other videos that you can find on the channel. Uh, I've got a what is or an introduction to Microsoft Purview video that you can find. This is all about, on, on the left here, we've got uh, information protection and data loss prevention. And information protection relates to sensitivity labeling, which I've already touched on briefly earlier, where you can apply sensitivity labels to content uh, in Microsoft 365, but not just in M365, also on on-premises uh, content and also on other assets as well, um, using labels which will mark and encrypt and, uh, and, and assign permissions. So um, the, the protection travels with the content and only those authorized for it can consume that content. Data loss prevention is another form of protection where it will prevent the loss of sensitive data from uh, leaking or being lost from, from your organization in the form of sensitive information types being matched to policies which will trigger rules and conditions and alerts to prevent things like credit card numbers and, and uh, all sorts of different sensitive information from being leaked outside of your organization. On the right-hand side there, we've got the, the governance side of things. Data lifecycle management, which relates to retention uh, and deletion of content. How long you um, will need to retain content within your Microsoft 365 environment. Very, very important to know what your obligations are there. Uh, retain content as long as you uh, are um, obliged to do so by regulations. And then equally as important, delete that content. Then records management does some very, very similar things with uh, the, the same uh, sort of technologies, retention labeling and, and policies, which uh, adds in a bit more functionality where you can retain and delete, but you can also add in processes for disposition reviews. So um, at the end of a retention period, uh, reviewers can decide what happens to that content. Does it get deleted? Does it get relabeled? What happens to that data? So th these are governance principles, along with e-discovery as well um, for legal searches and internal investigations. An equally important part of the governance process is, is the auditing capabilities as well. So um, lots of intelligence there on the, on the governance side of things under the Microsoft Purview banner. And this is only a fraction of what Purview does. If you want to know more about Purview, the insider risk management stuff that it does, communication compliance, everything that it does, um, I, I have a good video about that on the channel as well, which I've already mentioned. Well, I hope it's good anyway. <laughs> and then the last slide here, we're sort of retreading a little bit of uh, water here. The, the, there is some overlap. This is uh, Get Cloud Protection with Microsoft's Security Solutions. 
we've already talked a little bit about Microsoft Defender for Cloud. We've already talked, this is, this is bringing things together, really. We've already talked about entry permissions management, Microsoft Defender for Cloud apps, which is cloud app security. Um, but additionally here, there are technologies on here for Azure network security, uh, and GitHub as well, GitHub Advanced Security as well on the left there. So um, if, if you're in, in that world, if you're a developer uh, and using Git, GitHub, uh, this will help you to build secure apps from the start. I know absolutely nothing about GitHub or, or very little, so I can't speak to that for, for, very well. But um, these, these principles are so important if you're using these technologies to, to bring everything together and think about threats, think about controlling access to critical resources, think about securing your apps and get your security posture in order. And if you go around this circle, if you're leveraging all these technologies, then uh, you won't steer far wrong. Um, as I said, there's no silver bullet. There is no one size fits all. And um, really, most organizations are gonna need some sort of help with this, some sort of guidance from um, consultants or, or experts or architects to help them uh, build their secure securities posture, understand what their risk is and uh, and come up with a strategy and, uh, and implement that strategy at the earliest possibility. If you're not thinking about this now, you really should be, in fact, you need to be thinking about this yesterday because as I said, the malicious actors are not sitting still. They are uh, here and they're here to stay, I'm afraid, um, uh, for a very, very long time at least. I, I, I don't see the, these sort of threats disappearing. So we do need to think about these and uh, prepare as effectively as we can. Right, so that's our introduction to Microsoft cybersecurity in Microsoft 365 and Azure. A very, very high level uh, overview of what it is, what's available, and what you should be looking at as a starting point. So um, I certainly plan to come back and do a little bit more of a deep dive on some of these topics, hopefully in the very, very near future. So watch out for those on the channel. And uh, thank you for watching. As ever, we do appreciate your support for the channel. Um, please do give us a like. Liking this video helps us so much. If you could just click on that like button, it just takes a second. It just uh, gives it gives us more visibility and uh, pushes us up some of the lists that YouTube have. And if you could please subscribe and tell all your friends to subscribe as well, that would be amazing. Uh, we will be back again very, very soon with more demo videos, more content for you, uh, more guests, more conversations with the rest of our wonderful hosting team, uh, Kat and Azure and uh, Rue, of course. But uh, in the meantime, thank you for spending some time with me today. I've been your host, Peter Rising. Um, I'm not sure you know that by now, but uh, anyway, thanks again. You take care of yourselves and I will catch you all down the road. Bye for now.